Hey, Philip DeCourcy here, and I'm coming from the studios here at uh, Know the Truth. And uh, I thought during this time of national crisis, during these unsettling times for you and your family and your friends, that I'd just bring a, a message of comfort, hopefully give you a little bit of a biblical perspective uh, during these uh, troubling times. You know, some time ago, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, when he was the Secretary to Defense during the first Gulf War, he made this statement regarding life and leadership that there are no unknowns. There are the things we know and we can deal with. Then there are the known unknowns, the things that we know we don't know, but we know they're a reality and we have to address them when we can. And then there's the unknown unknowns, the things we just don't know right now, but might become a reality tomorrow. And I thought, you know what? I want to take that idea of the no unknowns the known unknowns, and the unknown unknowns, because you and I are living in days of uncertainty. There's certain things we know, and our government's trying to address that about the coronavirus. There's certain things we don't know. Uh, will our measures work? Uh, no man knows what a day can bring forth. We can only forecast so far into the future. And then there's the unknown unknowns. There's the things we don't even, we haven't even addressed yet that might become an issue. That's all rather scary. But I love that first category, the known knowns. And biblically speaking, there are some things we know about God, about His Son, Jesus Christ, about the promises of the gospel, about the future of the Christian. And I think if we can focus on the known knowns, that will help us deal with the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns. It will calm our fears. It will remind us to be anxious for nothing. And so think about this with me for a few moments, and maybe later on, as you watch this video, you can go to these verses in your own time. But one of the favorite phrases of both John and Paul is a little phrase we know. God wants us to know certain things about Himself, about His Son. That's why we have His Word. He's revealed Himself in the written Scripture, and He has revealed Himself in the living Word, Jesus Christ. Here's what John says in his first letter. In 1 John 3, verse 14, I want you to notice these words. He says this, We know that we have passed from death to life. That's a wonderful thing to know in the midst of this crisis. That you and I have had our sins forgiven. That the Damocles sword of God's wrath has been lifted because of what Jesus Christ did on our behalf on the cross. The wages of sin is death. That's the greatest threat to the human heart and to the human life. Eternal death separated from God if our sins are not forgiven. But as followers of Jesus Christ, we've gone to the cross, we believe in His resurrection, we've confessed Him as Lord, and we have passed from death unto life. And you and I are living a life today in relationship to God and the promise of the gospel through His Son. And that's a wonderful thing. Whatever the threats that you and I are facing right now with the coronavirus, and there'll be something else in the distant future. You and I have dealt with the greatest threat of all, the threat of sin and the death that comes through it and the wrath of God that comes in its direction. Here's another thing that John says in 1 John 5 verse 20, listen to these words where he says this, and we know, here's another thing we know, that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true. It's a wonderful thing to get up in the morning and face a new day with some of its uncertainties and trials and tests, knowing that we have understanding. We have understanding about God's nature and His disposition toward us in love through Jesus Christ. We have an understanding of Jesus' work on our behalf on the cross, but His present work as a great high priest encouraging us to come and pray to Him and find grace and help in a time of trouble. We know when we have understanding through the indwelling Holy Spirit as He brings the Word of God to bear upon our hearts. We know how the story ends. We have read the book of Revelation. We have understanding. And we mustn't lose our perspective in the midst of all of this. We know that we're saved and we've passed from death unto life and will not come into judgment. And, and we know through a biblical understanding that, that indeed um, God is in charge of this situation 
and he will never leave us or forsake us, and all the grace we need, he will indeed make available to us. Here's another thing. 1 John 3 verse 1, uh, the apostle John speaking about Jesus' return for his people. He says this in verse 2, sorry, Beloved, now are we the children of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know. Notice the words again. This is something we know. We know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, and we'll see him as he is. Oh, the hope of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed hope of his glorious appearing for his people. Heaven is our home. Jesus is coming someday to take us there. And he told his disciples, let not your heart be troubled, that I've gone to the Father's house and someday I'll return from the Father's house and receive you unto myself. We know that to be true. We know that's a, that's a, that's a hope that is sure. And that again should temper our responses. It should quell our fears. It should make us confident. Let me add, add two more here and we'll wrap this up. In 1 John 5 verse 15, here's another uh, verse we have with the phrase we know, and it's a really good one, not that the others weren't. 1 John 5 15, and if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have our petitions from God. That we know that God hears our prayers, and we know that God is disposed to answer the prayers of his people. And we know when we, when we link our weak prayers to the strong prayers of Jesus on our behalf, when we ask him, we know he hears us. What a friend we have in Jesus, right? All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. That's another thing we know in a day of unknowns, in a day of, uns, uh, of uh, unsettling news and unfolding drama. We know we have passed from death unto life. We know we have understanding that's true about the true God and the true perspective on life. We know that someday Jesus will take us to be with him. We know he hears and answers our prayers. And maybe, uh, the, maybe the best verse of all is, is written by Paul in Romans 8, 28, right? We know that all things work together for good to those that are called by God and those that are saved for his glorious purposes. That's what we know. We know in the midst of these bad situations and the bad news of people losing their life or contracting this virus, we know that this will work together for good. We know that God is sovereign. We know that his throne hasn't been toppled. We know that his kingdom will never be shaken. We know that Jesus will build his church. We know that God will be with us in our circumstances. We, we know that all these things that we're hearing about 24-7, God's in charge of it all. And that brings a certain peace to our hearts, that God is on his throne and he will remember his own. Let me finish with this. Corrie ten Boom, who saw darkness and death through her life and imprisonment at Ravensbrück, concentration camp in the Second World War. She's the author of the famous book, Hiding Place. She's famous for this statement. It's a great way to end our little uh, time together. Don't be frightened to commit an unknown future to a known God. We know these things about God. We know the promises of the gospel. We know our identity in Christ and we're secure. We know the comfort of the Holy Spirit. We know the hope of the second coming. There are no unknowns. There are no unknowns. There are unknown unknowns. Let the known knowns help you frame everything else. This is uh, me coming from our offices here at KTT. I hope this devotional and short message has been an encouragement to you. We are praying for you and your family. Would you continue to pray for us? Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for connecting with our ministry. We hope it's a blessing to you and maybe in ensuring it with others, it will be a blessing for them.